Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. This week I am going to be comparing cheap versus expensive cycling jerseys. Is it worth paying that extra money for a premium brand to get premium quality or had you may as well just buy something a lot cheaper, save that money and get something that's almost as good? Let's find out. So one of my favourite brands right now is Void. It's a Swedish company and they make one of the best cycling jerseys. In my opinion, on the market. It fits amazingly. It hugs in the right places. There's everything you need out of a jersey. It is absolutely stunning. I cannot recommend them enough. So when I went onto the app Wish and um, scrolled through cycling jerseys to see what I could pick up, I actually came across some Void kit. They used the Void pictures. They had good reviews. So I thought, hey, one or two things are going to happen here. Either I'm going to get brand new Void kit, high quality kit at a reduced cost, or I was going to find myself with egg on my face and have another counterfeit product but then at least I could compare the two and and uh, yeah unfortunately what's the saying if it's too good to be true it probably is and it it not pro it definitely is in this case I didn't find the hidden gem within uh, wish it well the kit arrived today and I'll let you take a look at it so there you go they're the two jerseys um there's not a great deal of difference in it as it stands the logo is slightly different on one compared to the other, but other than that, I mean, would you be able to tell the difference right there? Which one was a fake and which one was a real one? All right, so let's take a look at the collars just to, um, to get an idea of, of difference. So here you can see that one of them, well, just, just, just take a look at that, right? All right, keep that in your mind. Keep it in your mind, keep it in your mind. Now you tell me which one's a fake one. I mean, you don't need to be gogwant and realize that. Look at the quality in this. Look at this stitch in here. They've used white stitching here. This is terrible. This, this is supposed to be the label, so it's a large. So they're both the same size, 100% polyester. Bearing in mind that I've had this one for, for a, f a couple of months now. Apart from the fact that my little U has, um, has moved. Look at the stitching. The stitching's tight. Although it is still white, but it's so such a tight stitch. The fact that you look at that as well, that that shows you exactly what you're paying for. Not just that, it's the quality and the detail. Do you think whoever's made that spent any any moment of their life ever thinking about the quality of detail? This stitching isn't even in line, all right? This red and purple camo is a design for the 2019 season. However, I definitely don't think it should be this dull, this Let's take a look at the, a few of the other areas that separate these two garments. Here you've got a, um, a band that runs all the way through it from start to finish. Look, you can see that it just it's just one continuous band. It does have a bit of silicon in it, so it will it will offer a, an element of grippage, all right, to your cycling shorts. Now let's have a look at the the real one. It's cut higher than the bike, which is the way it should be. And just here, this is the um, the silicon part and this is the bit that grips your cycling shorts and that's all you need you don't need the full one ideally i'd like a little bit there maybe just a touch here just to keep that down because sometimes they do ride up on the front on me especially with my fat belly so that's it there you've got that little bit there and you can you, even in this you've got the the elasticity of, of i want to say it feels a bit like lycra but it isn't i don't I really, i'm not too sure i'm um materials but it's a it's you can tell it's high quality under there let's have a look at these here so main fabric is 90 percent polyester 10 percent elastine and the detailing fabric is 100 percent polyester so in terms of material same material as the other one however they get it so wrong on the other jersey one thing i absolutely love about the void kit is the sleeves the sleeves are just brilliant look at that gripper there it's just so subtle yet so grippy and it just it's just brilliant i just love the way that they've got their cuff sorted on this i presume that's laser cut as well now take a look at that there's no grip material there it's it's literally just a a very what feels like a very tight elastic in there um terrible all right let's try these on and see the difference so first up is the genuine void kit and as you can see um, it's cut slightly lower on the back so it's not going to um, ride up and if it does ride up it's still got a long way to go plus you can put 
plenty of stuff in these pockets and it's still going to sit where it needs to sit so the front is a little bit higher it doesn't leave much to the imagination um you kind of i feel like you need a a cyclist body to wear one of these you'd feel very um exposed if you if you didn't a bit like myself um very tight around here lovely cut under the arms like the cut is just sensational feels like a race suit feels like what a skin suit would feel like but it's just a it's just a normal jersey so you've got really nice tight fitting arms gripping in the arms tight fitting collar i, I like the fact that even though it is a a race almost like a, a it's got race pedigree it still has the 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 big collar i like the big collars on the jersey rather than like a a, a, a low cut neck um four pockets on the back one zip pocket four pockets in total it just fits it just fits <laughs> That's it, this is a large and it just fits. So if you are gonna buy a, a Void kit, I tend to, uh, unless you're as lean as anything, then I'd always tend to probably go up a size than you normally would. I'm normally a medium, but I, I still feel very vulnerable and exposed in this large. But let's try the other jersey on now and, and just see if you can see any difference. For those of you unaware, this top has changed. And if I was doing a blind test, I will be able to tell what the difference is straight away. Quality of the garment, the way the garment feels, right? The arms feel like if I wear this for any long period of time, my arms are gonna go blue and drop off. These, these cuffs are so tight, there's absolutely no giving them, and they're really quite painful. The, the excess of, <laughs> of fabric is not, it's potentially not a bad thing. For, it, this might be a normal large because of the, um, the cut of the, the original quality void garment is, is much more racier, much more sleek, but not everybody wants that. So technically, this could be a better fit to a lot of people. There's plenty of room. I can let my belly go and not feel ashamed. Um, however, the, um, the bottom is tight. This is, this is really tight. This grip is too tight. Again, any long period of time on the bike, this is gonna start to feel uncomfortable. Um, four pockets on the back. One thing I have noticed straight away is how much higher the pockets are here and how much you have to dislocate your arms to actually try and get anything in and out of them. But you are paying a premium for that high quality garment. You're paying £31 for this and the shorts. So can I live with it? Let's take it out for a test ride on the bike and actually see what it feels like when I'm out riding. That's the only way I can really get a good idea of how this feels in a, in a, in a riding position. First test up is the indoor Zwift cycling session. What I want to do is um, ride a race halfway through, swap jerseys, just to see what kind of cooling effect I'm getting. Like in an indoor environment, it's hard to stay cool when you're wearing a jersey. And um, I just want to see how cool I can actually stay in these. It's the cheaper version because it's cheaper and the material isn't as good. It's going to allow more airflow to get, actually get through to me and in turn become a better jersey to wear indoors than outdoors i don't know let's uh, let's jump on the bike and see what happens all right so the indoor test is over and i'm going to say that this void top this real top the more expensive top was better was comfier allowed more air to breathe through the top and actually keep me cooler halfway through i, I swapped around and put on the um the cheaper version and it was like putting a wind blocker on. There was just nothing getting through this material, which is a surprise. Because <laughs> it is breathable, but it just felt, compared to this, it just felt like it was, um, it had just stopped all the wind getting to me, so I couldn't keep cool. Oh, there it is. So, um, yeah, fit wise, I don't really like it compared to this. Like I've said, these are too tight, just far too tight. And, um, yeah, another thing I've noticed, can you see it? When I put it on, see that? So when I put it on, as I put it over, stretched it here, it just went, I'll give you a reenactment. It did that. And I didn't, I hardly even had to do anything and it stretched it. So it's pulled all those, those, th well, all that thread out there, see it? So another tick in the, a genuine void column. However, it doesn't get away with it that easily because this one, one thing I've learned about putting on a, a void top is because of this gripper here, when, same with, same with that one there, the fakie, when you put it on, 
it grips your arm about here and as you pull it to try and get it all on it does the same again it just it pulls those threads but obviously the threads are a lot stronger on this so you can see even on the genuine article if you're not careful if you just if you're just ragging it on like a, a normal top that you've worn for years you will get that you will get that pull in that thread so genuine article good the only reason you're getting that pull in that thread though is because of the grippage that you're getting from them so top tip when you buy a brand new void top put it on nice and steady right outdoor test now we're starting with the the genuine article again i think it's time to change up my shades as well pink pink socks what let's do this all right so welcome to the outdoor experiment uh, cheap versus expensive as you can see, I'm wearing the uh, the more expensive of the jerseys, and it's just started raining. Really should have thought about that, really, shouldn't I? That being said, I'm going to spend half an hour in this jersey, then I'm going to swap it around and do half an hour. And already, riding out to this point here, which is about 10 minutes into it, it feels like I'm naked. It just fits. So I guess the thing I want to touch on now is what three things do you think about when you're buying a jersey? For me, it's, what does it look like? What does it fit like? What does it feel like? The first point, what does it look like? Does it look good? It has to look good. If it doesn't look good, what's the point in buying it? You're gonna be seen by everybody else out on the road. So if you're gonna be out on the road, you've at least gotta look stylish. Now, when it comes to the fit, I guess you've gotta work out what kind of riding you're doing. If you're mountain biking, off-roading, do you want it too tight? If you're on the road, how tight do you want it? Do you want it so you can see everything? Or do you want it so it, it just hugs you in the right places without accentuating that massive belly that you've got? Finally, the cut. How is it cut? How does it feel? Is it grabbing you under the arms? Is it tight around the neck? Is it hard to zip up? How tight are the arms? See, if it's uncomfortable, then what's the point in wearing it? It's got to feel almost like you are not wearing it. For me, out on the road, I want to I want to wear something that that's tight but doesn't restrict, that doesn't flap in the wind when you start going fast, and um, doesn't chafe or feel uncomfortable when you're uh, when you're riding for a long period of time. And in this shirt, I think I've found it. Ten minutes into this ride, and it, it, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Right, what does it feel like? Where where is it pulling? Where is it tight? Where is it loose? Where is it baggy? How does it feel around my neck? How does it feel around my waist, my front, my back? And I don't even know I'm wearing it. So I'm going to do another 10 minutes now, swap this a bit further down the road and stick the uh, stick the other one on and, and see how we get on with it. So halfway through, it's time to change this jersey. One thing I love about this jersey is its fit. But one thing I don't like about it is 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 what's going on here. Like, yeah, you need to be uh, you need to be a lot slimmer to wear one of these than I actually am because if you just let it go, all of a sudden you no one wants to look like that, do they? So yeah, it does lose like half a point on that factor. I mean it's. It's me that's the issue, not the jersey. But anyway, let's let's change up. Too tight on the arms already. However, it is too tight on the arms, but this arm warmer slips down. And because this is so tight, it's gonna hold it up to every cloud, right? In terms of the way it looks, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, the print, you can't really tell how... Well, it looks faded. The print looks faded on this. Um, but around here, look. Look at that. I can let my belly go, and it still looks flat. <laughs> right. Instantly, what am I feeling? Apart from these being too tight, 
I said originally this feels too tight, but at the minute I can't feel it. Oh my God, the pockets. Yeah, still too high to get stuff in. On the bike, that'll be an issue. Very tight as well. It's very tight. In fact, there's hardly any give in those pockets. Getting this jersey in the genuine reverse pockets was easy. What Really elasticated. Snap back into position, didn't feel like it was ever going to fall out, but here... It's mega tight. I don't think it's going to fall out, but it's just mega tight. So these are tight. This is not as tight as it was originally, but this is tight. This here. This collar's a lot higher, and I can already feel it pressing on my larynx. So that could be an issue of wind restriction, oxygen restriction into the into the body to give me. Anyway, let's ride it. Let's see what it. Let's go on then. Let's go. Oh, I've got to ride off. Yeah, make it look cool, you know. Look, it's lambing time up here at Hardwick. Meh. Meh. Not what's going on here. It's busy. Can you tell I found how, how to zoom while filming now? Right then, so road ride done and um, yeah there's a difference, there is a difference. Alright so in conclusion, is cheap better than expensive? And in this example no, but we are taking one extreme and the opposite extreme and then trying to compare the difference. However, if you were to take a mid-range jersey, mid-level budget between, let's say, 30 and 50 pounds, I think that is probably where you will find hidden gems. And what I want you to do as, um, as, my, as my loyal audience, I want you to leave a comment below and let us know about these jerseys that fit in this 30 to, let's go 60 pounds, 30 to 60 pound range. Where are the gems in there? What do we find comfortable? What do we find stylish? Where's the best value for money? What's got the most pockets? What have you had for the last five years that still fits and is still the same color and still the same shape as it was when you first bought it? Because if you look at these two extremes, we've got the, 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 the cheap knockoff version. I'd give that five washes before it just either disintegrates, changes colour, shrinks, or I'm not going to wear it five times. I'm not, I'm not even going to wear that once again. It's now going to be used as rags. Whereas on the other hand, you've got the extreme of, of paying, I think I paid £60 for this jersey, but it was in a sale at super cheap price. What should have been 90, I think they range from 90 to £120. Now, how can you justify that? What, where? Where? Where is that justification from? Why anybody would want to spend that money, I don't know. Um, you leave a comment below and let me know what's the most expensive jersey you have ever purchased and why did you purchase it if you're purchasing it over £100? Is it literally just for the name? Is it, is it because you want performance gains that that jersey gives you? What is it? What are the reasons? Ultimately though, I think when it comes to spending money on kit, there are certain areas where you need to spend more money. Mainly shoes, mainly shorts, because your shorts are the only part that protects your butt from that seat. And if you're going to be sat in that seat for hours on end, you need almost like little amoebas massaging your butt as you're riding along. You want to get off that bike feeling like you've had a little tickle rather than feel like you've been savaged by a wolf. So in the next instalment, of cheap versus expensive. We're gonna check out shorts. This time, we're gonna check out a cheaper version rather than going to the extreme. We're gonna test a cycling short in the price range of 20 to 50 pounds to see what we can pick up in that range. And then we'll go to the extreme on the other end and we'll see what difference we actually get 
when I spend some time in the saddle. As ever, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Always, always, always leave a comment below to any of the questions that I have asked you. I'd, I'd love to know, one, how much you've been spending on your jerseys, and two, what are those hidden gems? Where can we find the best value for money in jerseys? And three, hit that notification bell, because that, that's important.